this week on To the Contrary. First, Elizabeth Warren continues to gain in the Democratic presidential primary polls, and Tulsi Gabbard may sit out next week's debate. Then, LGBTQ rights and the new Supreme Court. Behind the headlines, facial recognition software and fairness. Bay. Welcome to To the Contrary, a discussion of news and social trends from diverse perspectives of, first, women and the next presidential debate. When former Vice President Joe Biden and Massachusetts Senator Elizabeth Warren meet at next week's Democratic debate, the two should be running about even in the bid for the presidential nomination. They're virtually tied at the top of a very crowded field, according to the Real Clear Politics polling index. And Warren, who is surging, may be the actual frontrunner. Warren's jump in the polls follows her release of detailed policy plans, as well as out fundraising Biden by about $9 million in the third quarter of this year. But perhaps in a preview of his approach to his primary rival next week, Biden is saying, we're not electing a planner, and he's the one to actually get things done. Meanwhile, one of the four female candidates who qualified for the debate says she may boycott it. Representative Tulsi Gabbard charges the Democratic National Committee and media are rigging the primary against outsider candidates such as herself. So, Congresswoman Eleanor Holmes Norton, could Elizabeth Warren win the Democratic nomination for president? Actually, with four women in the top tier, we could be in for our first woman president, finally. <laughs> when Elizabeth Warren entered the race on this show, I said she would be the one. And I'll tell you, if the worst he can throw at her is, we don't want to elect a planner, then I'd say, yes, she's going to be the nominee. I think she set a pace for herself and a tone, and she's kept that pace, and she's on point, and she's, you know, she keeps it up. She's on her way. She can be the top of the Democratic ticket, but she will not be the next president. <laughs> well, you know, when you said that if all he can throw at her is we don't want to plan her, uh, that doesn't mean he won't come up with much Something worse, more, way but, worse. Right. Uh, and, of course, he will, because <laughs> with that exact, potty exactly mouth... exactly a negative thing, you know? <laughs> but... But can she stand up against him in the debates? Is oh, I think so. Question. I think I think she's got a lot of fortitude. She's fierce, and as Sanders falters and his health fails, uh, those voters are going to her. They're not going to him. Well, she'll do well in the debates, uh, but if you look at the polls, uh, she is her her politics do not co comport well with the polls on the Democratic side. She is far to, to the left, and I say this as a progressive Democrat. Uh, so I don't want to see my party uh, fail to take into account who can win this election. And that's why I think we, the American people are saying something to us when, when they are... When they are looking at uh, a man who I have no reason to be for either, uh, Joe Biden, as somebody who more closely represents their politics. Where exactly is she too far left? Uh, well, Medicare for all, for example. Now, wouldn't it, you know, you, you go to the average progressive Democrat, and we, we know what that means. It means you're for universal health care with the government paying for almost all of it. Which means taxpayers. Which means taxpayers. Now, so you would find probably most Democrats for that. But in terms of where the electorate is this time and who can beat Trump, that's why you see more people looking more toward, you, toward Biden. But see, she matches the Democrat primary voter very closely. And maybe not the general election Democrat and maybe not the general election voter, but the primary voter. 
that's why she's a real force. I think her Achilles heel, though, is in how is she going to pay for her socialist wish list? <laughs> I mean, let, let's be honest here. Mm -hmm. No one has really attacked the question of how do you pay for all of this? Medicare for all is just the start. We're talking about free college tuition. We're talking about reimbursement or for student loan forgiveness. Ray, taxing every wealthy person, uh, according to her own plans, only gets her about $3 trillion, maybe. The, the total price tag for what she's proposing is around 35 that means that middle class Americans are going to have to fit the bill, which makes it very difficult for her, for people to say, wait a minute, I, I can't get behind that kind of argument. I agree that I think that the, the, the shift immediately to Biden, uh, considering his entry into the campaign, is indeed a sign. I think that is a signal, considering how wide uh, the playing field is right now that everyone lined up in the polls anyway behind him is that we definitely have to corral and start to focus. But I, I will say as a candidate, um, you know, in the primaries, amongst a feel, you know what she stands for. She's clear. She's consistent. She's got stamina. And, you know, we're talking about these issues in a, in a, in a presidential election in a way that perhaps we haven't before. But, but you know, the, uh, the likability mm -hmm. issue, which, of course, is always <laughs> the most important one, although it shouldn't be. Mm -hmm. But she strikes me as pretty, <clears throat> she's very similar to um, to Hillary Clinton in that she's not super likable. She's kind of a cold fish. And um, she's a policy wonk. So how is that going to beat Mr. Television, you know? Well, I mean, all he's got is television, but he's very good at it. <laughs> I think that her story and this idea that she's sort of a lone wolf and pulling herself up and not tied to, I think there's a few things that very much distinguish her from Clinton in a lot of ways in terms of, you know, people on the outside looking in for sure. And I think that she has that, um, I'm just like you everyday person that Hillary could obviously never pull that off. Well, I think I that's one edge she has, but agreed. Um, how, where we're moving as a party amongst these very polarizing, some of them issues, I think is going to be uh, re very critical. And how Biden, how, how these two candidates meet in the middle on some of these issues is going to be um, for all of us to see, but we haven't thus far. Can I just challenge you on this likability argument? Because I think she has an authenticity issue. Um, we saw it with her heritage, claiming to be something that she was not for potential um, academic uh, uh, gain or, or uh, you know, prof professional gain. Now we've seen this uh, potential pregnancy discrimination argument. Maybe she was, maybe she wasn't fired because she was pregnant. So I think there's something about who really is she? Does she change based on what she thinks she can get out of it? Uh, and then Bonnie, I mean, but, I don't... Wait think... a second, Patrice. We have a president who not only lies, but a president who does 180s on who he is, where he comes from, what he's done in his life every day. And the public <laughs> are sick of that. So you're going to tell me that maybe she said, maybe she lied about, you know, her, her heritage, for, for, you know, pretending to be more Native American than it turns out that she was, um, and, this, and a pregnancy case uh, are going <clears> to <throat> hurt her up against who she might be up against. Yes, I do. Because claiming to be a, a minority as a minority, that's that's insulting. Claiming to be having pregnancy discrimination because you're a woman, as a woman who's just had a baby, that's insulting <laughs> to me. And to the but point about But it's not the, that uh, consorting with whores and paying off prostitutes, hey, you know, high dollar prostitutes. Well, you elected Bill Clinton. Didn't, 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 so. didn't, <laughs> come on, there's no comparison. No, I, I think we no, all there knew who not. President Trump was, and he's always billed himself as someone who made himself into a mogul. Maybe he started with a few million or a few less, whatever the case is. That's always who he's been. And I think he has more behind him than yeah. just the television prowess. He has an economy that is stellar. He has a 50-year low unemployment rate. He has a low, historic low unemployment rates for people of color. He has uh, median household income has hit a 50-year high now. Yeah, I, so he has a lot behind him <clears throat> that is going to be hard for the <clears throat> left to challenge. I don't think that there is any candidate out there who cannot be accused of, you know, swinging one way or the other you know, for the sake of a platform or a vote. I mean, the, the world of politics is such that you can sort of go down the list on authenticity, if that's what you want to call it. I don't think that is what her primary liabilities are, frankly. I think it's this issue of, you know, are people comfortable with her? Or are they swinging to a candidate who um, doesn't have a lot of strengths going for him right now because they are nervous about who the Democratic candidate's going to be? And we need to figure out how she speaks to those voters. But also, a lot of the things you raise in terms of her policy policy issues that uh, are so expensive, most of the people on that stage, if not all, have also endorsed. 
So, I mean, she and, and Sanders have taken the party even farther left. It's going to be very hard even for Biden Look, to come back I, to the I, Senate. When you have a president who says he never met somebody, didn't know somebody, <clears throat> this is in conjunction with the impeachment inquiry, and then the next day pictures of him with these people show up, there, unless there's sexism there, Lies are off the table as a criterion to vote against somebody. Ooh, how far we Let us fallen. know what you think. Please follow me on Twitter at Bonnie or Bay from politics to the Supreme Court. The U.S. Supreme Court heard arguments this week on three cases that may well determine the rights of LGBTQ workers, and the decision may hinge on two Trump appointees to the Supreme Court. Experts say Neil Gorsuch and Brett Kavanaugh, two conservatives, may be the swing votes in these cases about LGBTQ people who say they were fired because of their sexual identities. Supporters of LGBTQ rights gathered outside the court earlier this week, as did a conservative feminist who claims the rights of women and girls will be harmed, especially in sports, if men who identify as women can call themselves women. Inside the courtroom, Justice Gorsuch made a telling comment during arguments on the case in which a transgender woman says she was fired due to her sexual identity. Gorsuch called the case, quote, really close. Justice Kavanaugh gave no indication on how he may rule. Chief Justice John Roberts, a conservative who has sided with gay rights advocates in the past, appeared unsympathetic to transgender activists. He struggled with the use of two pronouns describing one person as, quote, he or she. The other two cases are about gay men who claim they were fired simply for being gay. A ruling in the cases is expected toward the end of the court's term in late June. So shed some light, if you will, on Justice Kavanaugh's position on gay rights, if, you know, because you... Well, I think, I think Gorsuch, Kavanaugh, and Roberts could end up surprising people. Um, and again, I, I think the, it's going to be a mixed decision, and they're going to carve out transgender and preserving it for the argument on sports and, and other. But I think there is a way that they can look at it to say that a gay man who's, who's denied rights uh, because he has a male husband or male wife, um, you know, that it's the same thing as a woman being denied rights who has a, has a husband. So why the difference <clears throat> with transgender then? And, and the really, fact, the question is biology. whether under a statute yeah. passed in the 60s, um, whether that was either you can interpret it through what the justice sees as the right decision to be covered by that or but if you look at the 60s clearly but nobody if, was talking about transgender look at it, back then for gay men and gay women um, biology is consistent it's a gay man who's a man it's a gay woman who's a woman with tra transgender it puts another variable in there that isn't necessarily sex it is their preference um, so i think that does alter it oh, and also the impact that it has on sports i mean how unfair for for girls that are aspiring to have a boy decide that he's a woman and, and just blow them out. And we know every time that happens, they do blow them out and they win everything. Okay, um, let's, let's not confuse the sports as, as Title IX. Right. The, the, these That's cases, what I'm saying. It's separate. Yeah, yeah. These cases come under Title VII. This is a statute right. I enforced as chair of the Equal Employment Opportunity Commission. And I have got to tell you that these justices have a big problem on their hand because this statute has been... In, enforced over and over again on one basis, what is the meaning of because of sex? Right. This is why Gorchik is uh, confounded. Uh, and when, when sex has come before this court, it has this, meaning conservative courts as well, they have consistently interpret, interpreted the word sex very broadly and I must say, in now, what amount to dozens and dozens of cases. So this is not a case of first impression. This is simply the first time we've had five conservative justices. And Title VII has been, uh, since, yes, the 1960s, mm -hmm. has been interpreted to mean sex means sex, whether it's the same sex... Meaning they, sex and gender are the same thing? Sex, the, sex the word not sex biology. or gender. 
Yeah. And and they have not differentiated between See, those two. I don't so, think they're so, going to have a Yeah, big but problem. can't they? But can, wait a second. You, I mean, you're a graduate of the best darn law school in the country. <laughs> you <laughs> know that uh, you know they they can always lawyers can always find arguments around sure. why precedent should. Uh, but the, you know, this isn't exactly the same precedent. No, no. the reason that uh, I, but I, why stress, I stress it there is, is not as if this is a case of first impression. They have had cases before them just like this right. uh, in, involving, do you really mean a man and a woman? Do you really mean a man and a man? And time and again, they have said sex means sex. And I'm saying it's going to be hard for Gorchitz, who has been, and this is important to note, a textualist. Mm -hmm. That means you look at... Yep the word and the word only, and you use the text and the text only, and I think the five justices are going to have a problem squaring. I don't think they are. I think they're going to probably uphold precedent, but they're going to carve it out so it doesn't affect Title X. And I would, well, I would but say... That's not, but that's running can't. headlong into the problem she's talking yeah, about. You've got to use Title I mean, she's saying, she's saying you either have... You're, you're overturning is, precedent if you do anything exactly. but sex, accept and the transgender biology. along with... It's biology. Well, th I think this is actually a great place for Congress to determine whether uh, sex, uh, sexual orientation, and all of these issues should be considered protected classes and receive the same protections under under uh, Title IX, Title VII, Title IX. I mean, the Independent Women's Law, uh, Law Center, we actually just launched this, and we submitted an amicus brief in this case because of the transgendered issue in women's sports. The impact of uh, over 300 uh, female uh, athletes, high school all the way up to college, are experiencing the challenges of having transgendered students competing and taking away their opportunities. Right, but I understand, and let's get to you because sure. we're running out of time. Sure. I understand they're separate titles, Second but couldn't violence. precedent still be used? Precedent under Title VII could be argued, should be by a lawyer representing LGBTQ people, that it should be seen the same under Title IX, right? Re no, no, no. regardless no, 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 of no, the that, title. That you, can't, you can't jump. You can't jump statutes. Here, er everything I've said to you is about interpretation of Title VII. This is a Title VII case, mm -hmm. and the courts are going to have to lock themselves into what does Title VII mean and what does sex mean. So you could, get, mean? you could give LGBTQ persons equal rights under Title IX, but not under VII, or vice entirely versa. Entirely different. Sex, okay. is, it means something yeah. entirely different under Title IX. Thank yes. you. And I, and, right. I, and I just want to say that, I, you know, this is about... If the case is specifically about people being fired and discriminated against very blatantly, and you know the the idea that people don't have these protections, I think, is even mm -hmm. alarming. And certainly, this is going to have a ripple effect. And there are places where you have some, depending on what state you're in. But at the end of the day, we have to protect people in the workplace. And there are a lot of loopholes, including this one, that allows uh, folks to be fired um, uh, for no other reason than their 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 gender or their sex. What about? People who are fired for no other reason but their political affiliation. I have a friend whose son was fired. It's not last... a protected class. I know, but I'm where saying... are you taking that? But, but we're up, we're about out of time. Sorry about well, that. But no, p political affiliation is not like being old, being a woman, being a person of color, that be a protected being class? LGBTQ. The Supreme Court has never <laughs> recognized that as mm -hmm. a protected class. Maybe it should. But be. behind the headlines, Big Brother is watching. Is that day here? Facial recognition programs have changed the way people live, travel, even protest. A new bill may change how this technology impacts low-income communities. This technology is being developed by a, a set of individuals. Those individuals don't necessarily reflect the diversity of our society. So you'll find, for instance, that there is a much higher uh, accuracy rate of uh, this technology use in, in white males. Well, why is that? Because white males are writing the programs. They're viewing faces through their lens and experience. New York Representative Yvette Clark announced the No Biometric Barriers to Housing Act of 2019 alongside colleagues Ayanna Presley and Rashida Tlaib. The bill would ban public housing from using federal aid for facial recognition software, including voice, fingerprints, and DNA. The authors hope it will protect tenants from biased surveillance technology. Everyone is guaranteed uh, the right to privacy under our Constitution. But when one is subjected 
to something. In other words, uh, you don't have the ability to opt in or opt out. Uh, that, I believe, crosses a line. And that's why this legislation has been introduced, to say to the federal government, yes, you have jurisdiction over public housing. However, the use of this technology uh, would uh, really exacerbate uh, the lives of the people who live there. The technology is being used worldwide in many different ways. Amazon's recognition for government and police use can allegedly detect emotional states. It's supposed to know if someone is happy, sad, angry, surprised, disgusted, calm, or confused. Amazon's ring recognizes so-called suspicious people. In a pro-democracy protest in Hong Kong, a smart lamppost set up to monitor traffic can reportedly tell a person's ethnicity, calculate how they look with or without facial hair, detect their mood, and read lips. But its accuracy isn't 100%. Clark says if the software is going to be sold for public consumption, it needs to be 100% accurate. There are uses already of this technology, and that is troubling in and of itself. Because again, this technology is not fully tested, and in the areas where it has been tested, we're finding particularly black women, women of color, are having much higher error rates than the general population. Add that error rate to the subjective usage in a housing setting, and you have no say whatsoever in its usage as part of your daily life. Clark is concerned that what seemed to be used to inform and protect is causing more harm than good, especially for disenfranchised communities. When we are talking about how we uh, address the issues of communities of color across this nation, we can't uh, fight against the assault on, uh, you know, people with, with weaponry and not recognize uh, sort of the policing of black bodies, um, of, of bodies of color. And that is what this technology put into public housing would essentially be there to do. It's to police the people who are there. Do you agree with Congresswoman Clark? No, I don't. Um, I think this technology can be very beneficial to consumers and to law enforcement and to uh, terrorism um, fights. Uh, you know, do I like that anybody can be watching me through any camera? No, not necessarily, but it's something that we understand. And trying to legislate the development of an evolving form of technology is 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 a futile effort, number one, but can also harm how it's developed. Is she is she legislating no, she's not. the technology or the use of the technology? Yeah. <laughs> which are separate things. Well, she's trying to get at the use. I understand that, particularly in an area where government has control, which is public housing. Yeah. I, I, I get that, but I think the larger spirit is, well, because black people aren't part of the development process, then the product is going to be warped. And while there is e evidence that, yes, black women have a, a higher incidence of not being facially recognized, like myself, that doesn't necessarily mean the, the, you throw out all of the technology, and that's where I'm concerned. Nobody wants to throw it out, but it ought, ought to trouble you that the highest uh, rate, error rate, is with black women. And, and it's certainly... I wonder, Congresswoman, if, <laughs> if it's the technology... I mean, it, let's, let's face it. It's harder to... See. Any camera that shoots a dark surface, you're going to get less of a clear picture than less if it shoots... Less of a shoots, refraction. Uh, right. Less of a reflection. Right. Uh, and, we, frankly, they don't know exactly why the error rate is great. Which, all, which says to me, this is just not ready for prime time. So before we go into public use, mm -hmm. I agree with you. Let's test it. The bill, if I'm not on this bill, I'm getting on this bill. <laughs> because <laughs> what I want to do, because one of the, one, one of, one of the provisions is, is for testing, for a report to the government. There's no reason to, to rush to this. You go out into the streets of Washington, D.C. today, you will be photographed. But that will not be used against you the way this technology is But that's how we found the Boston you. bombers. Right. Was, no, it was not facial technology. Well, no, but, but it was videotape. No, no, no. I'm talking about the cameras mm -hmm. on every yeah. street yeah, corner. because they're everywhere. Right. Yes. So, I, there's a, you know, there's a scourge of profiling, discrimination, 
in housing in general. I think laying this unknown, already Quickly. tested issue on people who are already disenfranchised is a non-starter for me. And so just not use it until it's perfect? I just don't think it has any place in, in housing or, you know, especially not if it's not optional. But in general, this is not an appropriate use for it at all. Well, all right. Recognize... Thank you so much. That's it for this edition. Please follow me on Twitter and visit our website, pbs.org slash to the contrary. And whether you agree or think to the contrary, see you next week. You were saying... Funding for To the Contrary provided by the Cornell Douglas Foundation, committed to encouraging stewardship of the environment, land conservation, watershed protection, and eliminating harmful chemicals. Additional funding provided by the Wallace Genetic Foundation, the Colcom Foundation, and the Charles A. Freoff Foundation. For a transcript or to see an online version of this episode of To the Contrary, please visit our PBS website at pbs.org forward slash to the contrary. Be more PBS.